Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Fly on the Wall podcast. I am with uh, two, two awesome people today. I have a co-host, Adam Wiley. He was on the other day. Uh, you, hey, you, you I'm have happy a wonderful, to be here. Thanks amazing for having face. me. Absolutely. Oh, it's a and, face for radio and podcasting. So oh, I appreciate you. Well, <laughs> and then we we have Justin Shankaro, whose hair made an appearance before he even showed up, which was That's awesome. Correct. Yeah. My brother from another mother. Yes, my hair has a, a mind of his own, and sometimes he just shows up. I'm not even in the room. He's just there. Uh, you know, he's got a presence. As, as Adam knows from our days working with Five-ish. Oh, yeah. I always, always got that, get the, get the wig fixed perfectly and, you know. Get, get it in there. In right. I got some pins <laughs> for you that, that won't fit in my hair anymore <laughs> if you need it. For sure. So a yeah. little bit, a little bit of background on, uh, on Mr. Shankaro here. Um, I, I only know of you through Adam and, and stories that he shares at night with us, you know, playing Truth. Halo and we play games and what kind of um, stories at night are being shared. Oh man. They're late night stories. Amazing. They're none of your concern. Okay. They're none of your they're... concern. It's, it's, it's not anything <laughs> weird and, and trapping, you know, no, it's all, not, it's all good stuff. All. You know, I love you. <laughs> Uh, no, so I was, you know, so before I start every episode, I, I need to make sure I, I know kind of what I'm talking about. Um, so I always go Fair. to the IMDB and I am always amazed at like the length of your IMDB and Adam's IMDB. And I know that's not like the gauge of, of everything. And I know that you guys have done more, but just the amount, just the sheer volume of everything you've done up to date is just astounding from voiceover work to uh found out you guys have been in my favorite video games over time uh, la noir <laughs> and i'm like yeah are you kidding Why? me you know and and uh that's such a great game to well, play, i don't know, the way, LA you know noir. jacob's adam actually and I, playing that adam and I just got, we just got started in this business so you know i mean it is <laughs> it's pretty remarkable to see all the work we've yeah. done. yeah you know, last year started. man well, yeah, I, it's been a whole know, year now. 25, somehow, 30 years ago. <laughs> somehow you packed in 30 years worth of work in a year, and that's that's fantastic. I mean, wow, you know, COVID it's just it's a blessing, and... such a blessing. Right. Now, Justin, uh, when I first met you, I was six, and we were going to network together for Picket Fences. Now, in case you guys don't know how this works when you get a TV show or some TV shows, sometimes you do test screenings and all of these things, but we went actually to the CBS studios right next to where they film Price is Right, uh, to actually go to into that building for network for a TV show we did together called Picket Fences, which was on CBS Friday nights, 10 o'clock, back when nobody was home because TiVo didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> nobody watched it hardly, but we had a great time. It was an Emmy award-winning show that got a lot of accolades that everyone was, what's that? And when, how long has that been on? Right? So that's where I first met you. Yep. And we bonded in the parking lot. I still remember it to this day. Um, but my mom was like, oh, that's the kid from Erie, Indiana, right? So that was that the start of your career in Indi Erie, Indiana, or were you were you doing like commercials and voiceover and stuff before that? Yeah, well, you know, I'm sure as we all get started, typically at that age, we're all in the commercial game. So yeah, I was, yeah. Uh, I probably did, you know, 50 commercials or something up until when from the age of like six and a half to about 10 and a half or 11 commercials then guest appearances on shows uh you know fresh prince of bel-air who's the boss oh how was that yeah. well fresh prince of bel-air was fun because i was in the episode with evander holyfield when he oh, actually wow. had just, the real deal yes he had just won the heavyweight world championships and what i thought was super cool about evander holyfield was that he showed up on set in a full black leather suit and i'm talking black leather pants black leather shirt and a black leather blazer. And I'd never seen a get up like that before. And I was quite impressed. Well, that's, that's how uh, you that know you sounds impressive. It, was when you have a full exactly. leather outfit and you're sweaty. Um, I, I, <laughs> I, how do you I, get I, out I, of it then? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember like watching Eddie Murphy. I think it was raw. It is raw. He came out with, uh, it, 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 he, was, he had that purple leather outfit. I was like, yeah. you know, even at a young age, I was like, you know, that's how you know you've made it. You have you can a leather only, outfit. <laughs> you can only wear a full black leather or full leather outfit as a man when you've made it. So I've, <laughs> yeah. I, I have still never worn one, <laughs> but right. I hope at some point 
to don the full leather suit. Now, but what's I, the I, age I, limit? Because Evander Holyfield <laughs> became a world heavyweight world champion like when he was in his early 20s. And I know Eddie Murphy's Raw came out when he was like 22. True. So is, is like 25 like I the, aged out the of age limit? I could of... have aged out. You're, you could be right. It could be done. Yeah. It could be yeah. over. Well, so yeah. anyway, uh, yeah, going back to the the good old days of the of the late 80s, early 90s. So yeah, the first major gig I did was Erie for sure, because that was a series regular. But um, I had 12 auditions for that job. Can you believe that? Really? For Erie, in, Indiana? For Erie, Indiana. I had to go in, meet casting, then meet the director, meet producers several times, then meet the money people, then go to network. And then I get all the way to network. And it's between, I think, me and two other kids. And um, one producer loved me. Another producer liked me. And then I think the network really liked me, but the money people were not sure. Mm. So they called my agent. They're like, well, you know, we really like him, but we're going to do a whole nother casting for this role again. And we're not sure whether we're going to hire him. So I was like, well, that sucks. So then I didn't hear anything for a month. And then a month later, they called my agent. They're like, well, um, we have two other kids we want to bring in network, but we want to bring him back as well. So I went to network a second time. I'm, oh, I'm wow. wondering that's like, unheard of. If, I've, I'm wondering if that's even been done before, you know? I, I've never heard of that before. Twice ever. to network for the same part. And finally, I think they just felt sorry for me at that point. They're like, all right, fuck it. Give it to the kid. So that's how I got the job. Uh, but yeah, no, I loved it. It was, it was a blast. It was super fun to work on. I mean, it was like uh, a bunch of writers. This was their first big show and, you know, a young crew. We were climbing through fog. We had like a little uh, clubhouse where we kept our clues. It was, it was a great time. So it was a fun set. And, you know, we were canceled because it was a, a shitty time slot. We've heard of things like that, right? Yeah, never, never in my <laughs> life, James, have I ever. Now time slots don't matter because like everything's I know. streaming, everything's all wild. It's it's gnarly how how things change like that. That nobody needs to be sitting at home watching it at the same time. Most people just binge watch an entire season in a night anyway. I do, and as I long do. as it gets the clicks. Lately, totally. it's been Shit's Creek. <laughs> God, it's question. so good, just yeah. nonstop. Yeah. Do you know who you went up against uh, at Network for Picket Fences? Were there a I have other kids? no clue, but tell me. Well, I don't know either. That's why I'm asking you. But I oh, do I don't. For I Picket. remember the dude that was that was up for uh, against you. Yeah, I remember yeah. who, I, and he looked much older than you, and he was like, uh, well, that was the kid he, from he Lassie, looked, who oh, now has was gone it? on to have a great career. He's been on Blue Bloods for years. Oh wow, I didn't even yeah yeah. So, See? Well, like Timmy. Uh, I forget, what's his name? I think it's Will. Uh, he's the, you know, he's like the middle son on Blue Bloods. He plays, he's a cop. He's great. I mean, he's been okay. on forever. That's interesting. Yeah. Absolutely. Did. I, I listen to your stories every time you guys tell them and, uh, and your whole story, <laughs> it's about having it being called back what you said 12 times. I, I, that to me, I, I'm not in your business, but that seems like a lot. So it's like when you oh, it's too like many, that, too know, many like, times. It's, it's insane. It um, and then recently, um, I was watching uh, what is it, the Mitchells versus the Machines? Yeah, on, on Netflix. And I was like, oh, that wasn't bad at all. And then just out of respect, I always watch the credits, and I saw Justin <laughs> Shinkaro, and I saw Adam Wiley. I was like, that's awesome. I know <laughs> these guys. That's I'm. I was so excited to see you guys on on credits. You know on. It's, it's it's always it's always fun. What is it like? Like I asked I, I asked Adam this the other day. Um, like when when you do a character voice or or you're you're doing your voice acting, do you do you get used to the sound of your voice? Like that's oh, one I, of the I, things I, I always wonder. I can, I can hear the sound of my voice all day every day. I mean I'm infatuated with it. I love it. <laughs> wow. Sometimes I just I play it on loop. I'm I'm in the shower and I'm just like listening to myself <laughs> just on my recorder. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Some people hate the sound of their voice. It's not like I love the sound of my voice. I'm just used to it, right? Because we've been doing voiceover stuff for so many years. We oh, no, I hate it. Back. Unless I'm doing a character voice, yeah. I, I want it to uh, burn in a, in a fiery <laughs> pit of pitness. Cool thing about Mitchell's versus Machines, man, is um, you and I filmed our first TikToks together. 
yes. uh, during that. That's where we filmed the Picket Fences TikToks. And because we were already working together, we, we filmed right. all three parts right. or all four parts, actually, in just that that one day that we like an eight hour day that we film that we recorded. I would guess I would say Mitchell's versus Machines, which was my first time in a recording studio since the pandemic had yeah. hit. And what about you? I think so. I think you're right. I think that was probably the first time. Um, but yeah, that was my, uh, we did the Adam's TikToks in the parking lot. And I was super impressed with how Adam had figured out what we were going to shoot and how involved they were, which is why he's crushing it on TikTok. And I'm a huge fan. Go oh, thanks, watch man. him on TikTok. He's awesome. Uh, yeah, I think that was probably my first time in a recording studio post COVID or, you know, if I've in COVID still, I mean, I, you know, I've been in a recording studio a couple times. I mean, it's very yeah. rare. Like almost everything still is recorded from home. In fact, I had, I did one gig a couple weeks ago where I had to, have you done one where you have to go to Warner brothers and get that big kit? No, not this, at all yet. This was only, I only had done it. I just have done it once. A lot of people have done it a bunch of times, but I did it once and you go to Warner brothers and they give you, it's kind of like a voiceover studio in a box. They give you this huge freaking box and you open it up and they kind of tell you what to do. And there's like an iPad in there. There's a microphone. There's a, you know, a mixing thing and you just plug in all these things and then they remotely handle everything. So you're on with the mixer and the sound engineer. Such a smart idea. It's brilliant. And it's just wild. So I was, when I picked it up um, from the guy, I said, so, you know, when do you think, at, at some point when, you know, when do you feel like we're going to be back in the studio? Uh, Cause it seems like COVID's coming to an end. And he's like, well, for ADR, he's like, I don't think it's anytime soon because Warner brothers, at least he said, you know, is, is concerned about, they don't want to be, have any problems with liability. And because ADR is five or seven people in a room, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we're kind of tight, or more depending on, you know, the, that's right. Or 10 group. plus. Yeah. They don't want to have any any problems. So he's like, I think it's going to be for a while. It's amazing, though, that um, even when you have a group of just six people, for those of you who don't know, we're talking about like um, we do a lot of not only voices for for uh, animation, but voices for like your favorite TV shows and movies and such. It's amazing how five to six people or even four to six people can sound like an entire stadium or yep. a full restaurant. It's uh, it's pretty crazy and really cool, like how how that's all edited and mixed in. And I really think that like sound editors are geniuses for how they they kind of put it all together to make it sound as realistic as possible. But yeah. you, like me, you've been doing voiceovers and and stuff for I don't know seven thousand and five years about uh, seven thousand um, and six seven thousand and <laughs> I was one, one, off, one off. Thanks, Max <laughs> Maven. Uh, so. What it you've done so many things. Um, you were Charlie Brown, yes, yes, Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown for a while. Uh, how was that experience like being such an iconic Peanuts character? Get met, it pays. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> that was my tagline. Uh, yeah, no, Charlie Brown was cool. I mean, you know, fun to go in there and knock out some get met uh commercials and and do a couple cartoons of course be part of the uh the legacy of charlie brown and peanuts yeah i mean just an honor to be able to be uh part of that crew so a blast i mean super you no know, you know my brother um eric was uh his skating partner for years was charles schultz's daughter deanna no way yeah for like wow. i don't know wow. 10 to 15 years something oh, like wow. that did she so, inherit like i mean he's got to be worth you know it's funny i was up in sonoma last weekend just this past weekend for a friend of mine's birthday wine tasting and it's called the charles schultz airport because oh really he's, he's from sonoma sonoma county and there's peanuts and charlie brown and lucy like oh, all over awesome. the place it's all over the airport and it's all over sonoma it's really neat that's cool yeah <laughs> didn't you do something for the olympics too were you the, the Olympic? Yes. Yeah, you yeah. were the Olympic little. Uh, little I was the Olympic mascot or crow or... For, for the Atlanta the Atlanta uh, Olympics, nineteen ninety six. Right. The I Carrie played. Strug Olympics, right? The Carrie Strug Olympics. What a freaking yeah. girl she was, right? Was oh that yeah, amazing? incredible. Amazing. Yeah. So, like I was saying, like your IMDb doesn't do you justice because th there's so many other things. This is why I really wanted Adam on. 
<laughs> because Adam's because like, I know all the weird he's stuff. He's like, like, I've like known him, he's fluent in I was French like and <laughs> speaks Mandarin and all of this stuff, and has lived in. Didn't you live in China for a while? I lived in Shanghai for a year. Yeah. Oh, wow. Crazy awesome. man. I've I remember. I'm not sure why I came back. <laughs> <laughs> I hired. Oh wow. I hired you for a voiceover gig That's because right. of your multilinguistic talents. I work for Adam now. That's right. That's true. <laughs> oh, that's, that's very sweet. cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was pretty rad. I mean, I haven't I haven't been the lead on a on anything uh, like that where I could hire people. That was great. In a couple of years, but like it was so much fun to be able to do it. Um, it's it's very stressful, man. I gotta say, like, I'm sure. I'm sure. Actually, it's really nice to not be a leader. I just <laughs> did a gig, tell you. I did a gig last week, and you know they wanted um, they wanted you to print out all the paperwork, scan it, and send it back in to the, the coordinator. So I do it, I scan it, I send it back in. And for some reason, it won't go through. It says the file is too big. So then um, it bounces back. So then I upload it to Google Drive. I send that over to the leader. And he's like, oh, you know, it needs to be done again. So I mean, I just, I did it several times, but I actually felt more bad for him because I understood he had like six people part of his group. And thinking like, you know, like you said, it's got to be very stressful. Yeah, it's it's incredibly stressful, like I because could, you got all that paperwork, job. to be honest. It's just yeah. ugh, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Like the, the more I learn about, like uh, I talk to Adam a lot and I kind of pick his brain because overall, I'm, I'm just curious in nature. You know, and, and, uh, you know, like I'll ask him, I'm like, why, why are budgets so high for, for filmmaking? And he's like, well, it's because of this and this and this. And then I find out about the, you know, like the voiceover side and the ADR and, and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know how, like the person that has to put it all together has to be a genius, first of all. And then on top of that, you realize, cause I'll try to mimic things on my own. I'm like, I, I wonder if I could do that. And, uh, and Adam posted this TikTok because I didn't know what he was talking about. And it was just Adam making grunting noises and exerting. And, and I was like, they're called efforts, Justin. Yeah, that, that I, I thought that was one of your late night uh, rendezvous <laughs> with, uh, with Sophie. Oh, that's, that's what it always sounds like, right? It always <laughs> sounds weird. <laughs> And you sure crazy. you weren't recording one of those? It's an I mean, I might as well be recording something that's odd and, and crazy when you're doing efforts. It, it, does, it always sounds like that. Right. Uh, it's, you take it out of context and it's just people going, uh, 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 and you're like, what the, f what are totally. you doing? Totally. Uh, so well, like with things like with that, like I just have a hard time speaking sometimes, but when you have to make those noises, like those guttural noises and really just how, how do you put yourself in a comfortable spot to where you're like, I, I just have to get it done and then, and then get something like that done. Like I, I don't understand the headspace you have to be in to do that. There is no headspace. We're actors. We, we just do it instantaneously. We've been doing it for so long. You don't even think about it. You know, you could be having a conversation and immediately turn into grunting uh, or whatever is needs to be done. I've been on I've been on set where I've seen just some remarkable on camera acting where, you know, an actor will be like right in the middle of telling a joke, laughing, director calls action and is just immediately in the scene mm -hmm. as a different person. So, yeah, I mean, that's what we're you know, that's what we're, we're professional actors. That's what we do. I don't need to get in any headspace. I just go and do it. Yeah, same. I mean, I understand where you're coming from with the whole autopilot thing, but to break it down for people who kind of really don't <laughs> understand down, please. Adam, all of that. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what it is. Um, you put yourself kind of in the position, you know what, it, what it's like to carry something heavy. We've all moved a friend begrudgingly for beer and pizza. We've all done it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you have, when your character is like throwing a rock, you're a superhero, you're throwing a boulder at somebody, <gasps> you know how heavy that is. You know the strain, you know the sounds you make. You know the sounds when you throw it. It's hard. It's not easy. It's not like, a, right? It's, it's a hard lift. So you put yourself in that position of, almost memory recall when you've done something that's similar so that you can kind of like associate it. Well, I mean, I'm not throwing a car, but obviously a car is thousands of pounds. So this person's not going to have an easy time just going ahead and picking it up like it's a baseball unless that's their power, right? So 
you put yourself in the position of what you think might relate in your in your world to the world that you're seeing on the screen that would fit. That's a much better answer. You should have asked Adam. Or to add, have or, you both on. It's, yeah, it's, uh, or or you know, just to add to what Adam was saying, like in a fight sequence, for example, you know, you just kind of imagine what it's like. You know, a lot of times we. We play somebody who's been shot or is in a fight. You did. You've gotten you know, shot. You've been in a fight. You've done all of that with right. me. <laughs> right. Exactly. We've done it all. So it's like you kind of imagine like, oh, uh, what would it be like if somebody, you know, hit you across the head and then socked you in the stomach and kicked you while you're on the ground? And you just kind of, you. I mean, even though that fortunately it hasn't happened, you kind of imagine what that situation would be like and what those emotions and those guttural sounds would be. And you just go for it, you know, you, you just make it happen. You also kind of know what it would be like to be shot ish because That's you, right. you at, in Picket Fences, there was a, there was a school shooting episode, yep. which was super heavy. And uh, you actually got shot in that episode and had to be squibbed. And I remember that was very intense because we didn't know how your body would react to the squib. We didn't know how right. it would be. It ended up being much, much simpler than so everybody for the, thought. For those that don't know, what's a, what's a squib? So a, a squib is actually a, a little pop of CO2 cartridge that you put onto your body um, in front of like a light kind of vest. And what it does is it simulates a gunshot wound. So it will, it will blast CO2 through the shirt, uh, mm. but it will have an impact uh, or a kickback, much like shooting a revolver. So your body will go backwards, which is why you have to have a fall crash mat behind you unless you're wearing a, a turtle, which is... A, uh, a back vest with a spine on it, like you would if you ride a motorcycle. Right. But um, but uh, you that that blows out from somebody that's off camera, and sometimes they have little little packs of fake blood that just. Um, so you can imagine like filming Desperado, uh, what that was like when people had to wear like nine of them, uh, as Antonio Banderas is blowing people up. But yeah, Justin had to had to wear one for sure, and it was it was kind of a scary moment actually because we didn't. We didn't know what was gonna what was gonna happen. I remember it was pretty intense. Right. Yes, I'm just plugging in my uh, my battery. Give me one second because I'm losing. <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. No one wants to lose the juice. Yeah, no, no squeezing the juice. What's Squeeze the juice. Do I, oh, do I have anything interesting for you? Let's see. Swimming, salmon, 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 swan, Swanson, Swanson. Maybe it's on the Samsonite. Oh yeah, it's right here. Samsonite. I was way off. I knew it started with an S, though. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm so glad you're on today. It, it, it's uh, that there's so many, so many things like you know, I I wouldn't think to ask, but you've known you've known Justin since I think you said you were eight. Uh, we practically grew up together. I was six Thanks. actually yeah. when I when I first met Justin. So I mean, I've I've known him for thirty years, uh, thirty one oh, years but, actually. Yeah, crazy. Going back to uh, what you were talking about, Adam, that episode where I was shot which was interesting because I remember that was the first time I held a gun because they mm. had, you know, they had blanks in it, but it was so heavy and it freaked me totally. out. And then, then the kid had to point the gun at me to shoot me. And I said to the, I don't remember who was directing that episode, but I was like, can you please like not have him point it directly at me? Just have him point it slightly away from me. And Brandon Lee, like, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. And the director was like, Oh, well there's, you know, there's only blanks. And I was like, I don't yeah. care. Like, I don't want the gun pointed at me for mm -mm. some odd scary reason. And it was still very nerve wracking. Like having a gun pointed at you was fucking terrifying. You don't need to act in that moment. Oh, Justin knows all about that. Uh, yeah. But Justin, unfortunately, has not had a blank gun pointed at him for, oh, for any that's, reason. That's even scary. Um, that's really scary. He, he's dealt with real guns as, as, a, as a military vet his whole yeah, life. That's, uh... You know, it's 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 never a good feeling, um, and yeah. I I totally get where you're coming from because like Adam was saying, you, you said it was Brandon Lee, right? And there was a there was that yeah. accident. That's right. Know, so I can I can totally understand why you're like, mm -mm, nope. Yeah, <laughs> but not, at the same time, you today. do have fire marshals and and gun marshals with military experience and training yes. on set where yeah. they do have to show you all calibers, all chambers of the gun and make sure it is a clean uh, cartridge and, and, and mag and whatever the heck you're using um, at the time. And, uh, you know, I, I did feel very safe on picket fences, I have to say, with that. But Justin, that's not a horrible job for you to look into with, with your 
um, with your training and, and all of what you've been through, um, yeah. it would be quite fun. I think for you to, to have to, um, oh, that'd be, be awesome. in control of military arms on, on sets. I think like you would really oh, enjoy that. that. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. You know, if this, if this never pans out, <clears throat> or talking to really cool people, you know, but, um, there was a story that I heard that involved oh, is there? Um, <laughs> that involved you guys doing drag. All right, yeah. I gotta explain this. I gotta explain okay. this. So <laughs> Justin and I during Picket Fences, there were Halloween episodes, right? Yep. And I remember this one Halloween episode where we were we were, I think, uh, Eric and Lyle Menendez. Do you remember that? Uh yeah, I do remember that. And then we were forced to go change. And what do we change into? Uh, Nancy Kerrigan and the other one. Tanya Harding. That's Tanya right. And Harding. I was I was Tanya Harding. <laughs> you were Nancy Kerrigan. I had to bash you in the knee with a with a rubber yes. pipe. You said, <laughs> why me? And we rollerbladed out the door. I remember my eight-year-old <laughs> self being so comfortable for no reason. <laughs> Well, because you're a leotard. Dancer, that's why it was no big deal for you. I mean, I get. I that's probably the answer is that yeah. I'd worn leotards my entire life, being like a dancer and a gymnast. It was like, oh, something tight around my package again. Uh, <laughs> and but but like I had to like wear that wig, and I was like loving it. I got to rollerblade all around set, and then Justin cowering in a corner, having just gone through puberty a couple years ago. Uh, sitting there in a director's chair, just going, <sighs> I remember yeah. drinking a Snapple, just like <laughs> hating life. And it was hilarious. We used to play uh, paper football with um, Snapple caps. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I you're absolutely that. right. I, uh, I was not loving that for sure. I remember vividly having a memory of coming out of the makeup trailer. And you know, Adam, like when you come <laughs> out of the the makeup trailer, there's those like two steps before you get yes. down to the ground. They're, and they're big steps. And they're, they're not like little steps, steps. And they're they're precarious to begin with, no matter if you're, you know, just regular wearing regular shoes or not. They're and I was wearing AF. these high heels. <laughs> they had me in these high heels for Nancy Kerrigan. I can't walk in high heels. And I remember like <laughs> holding on for dear life as I'm coming down these stairs, thinking I'm going to die and fall on my face uh fortunately i made it but yeah that was definitely not one of my um my most enjoyable moments for sure <laughs> now you know what the girls had to go through every single right. episode you're, right. you're, you are Crazy. not alone i uh so i'm i'm a freemason and within freemasonry there's a, a couple little branches that branch off for the the younger people right so we've got the demole for the boys and then we've got the job's daughters for the girls mm -hmm. and so the job's daughters thought it would be hilarious if they picked a couple random people <laughs> to dress up in drag. Yes. Me uh -huh. being one of them. I was <laughs> so uncomfortable. Please tell me you have a picture. Please tell me you have a picture of that. Uh, there's probably there's probably a picture <laughs> picture somewhere, but it was it was so uncomfortable for me. I was just like, oh yeah, this isn't this isn't for me. Like, so my hat's off to those men that can wear a dress comfortably and really pull it off because I I just yeah, right. Totally. Yeah, so Go uncomfortable. For it. It. You know, you know, Bobby did that to me once. We were on a cruise um, <laughs> the week of my birthday. And I think it was either the day before my birthday or on my birthday that there was this um, there was this uh, scavenger hunt for the cruise. And the last thing was you need to bring a guy up on the stage with wearing no shirt and only a woman's bra. He has to have lipstick on, uh, pants, you know, his normal pants. And there was like a couple other things. And dude, if he didn't dress me up so fast, like <laughs> he was like, Adam, go. <laughs> oh, we, we I, I can actually, I can actually hear Bobby say. saying that, dude, put this <laughs> on. <laughs> and I did. You're doing And it. I did. And That's how awesome. on that one. <laughs> That's a good sport. The last time I dude, was. Dude, I want to win. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, we know you want to win. Yeah, well, we, true. We, we know. We know. You're, you're if very... you're ever curious if I want to win or not, just go to this is Adam Wiley on Twitch. Yeah. And watch us play video games every night, and you'll see if Adam wants to win or not. Yeah, it's it's, it's so bad. It's such a slaughter every time. You're very you're very very modest about it, but you've got an incredible record. Like I thought I was decent at games, and 
uh, compared to Adam, apparently you are decent at games. Apparently, all you guys did, you know, like in between takes, is like, you know, let's play some, you know, I'll work on my magic and uh, and we'll play some Halo, and and good lord, I I'm no, I'm not even anywhere near. Long days, man. Yeah, long yeah, days. Right. Long <laughs> There's days. nothing else to do but apparently <laughs> learn French, play video games, learn Chinese, <laughs> <laughs> play Carmen San Diego. We I played that a lot. Oh, I missed. I that loved game. Carmen yeah. San Diego. I mean, yeah. That was a good one. Good. It was. It was. <laughs> Justin, what's your um, what's your favorite? on-set memory from any job doesn't i don't care i don't even care what job it is oh, favorite on-set memory ever it's definitely got to be the moment with lauren holly during the wet dream scene oh that was the best no it was a close set it. no one could go in and i was like no set, and for so some mad reason i kept forgetting my lines <laughs> <laughs> and wait, okay, which, what, what, show, what show was this on this was on picket fences it oh, was the man. it was uh when his character matthew experiences his first wet dream and she's holding like a game boy and a chocolate cake right. in a black um bra and panties and then she takes off the bra yep. in front of justin and yeah. for some reason for some reason that took four hours to shoot yeah, it, yeah. It, was, it should have been you know 45 minutes tops but i just kept forgetting my lines Forgot my lines again sorry <laughs> What's my line again? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my God. That's so funny. Laura was pissed. She was so pissed. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't even know about that. Yeah. Well, it was a close set. You wouldn't know. Yeah. I wouldn't know. Right? Yeah. Man. That was, we had that some was crazy times on that show. No, I didn't know not. that Don Cheadle was a card shark. Oh yeah. I had yeah. no flipping idea. He's a professional poker player. So, you know, I was doing some magic tricks to the crew. Very, very simple, really ridiculous magic tricks. And because I was bad back then. And I, <laughs> Don it. Cheadle, I was like, hey, you know, you want to play some poker? And he was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I had no idea that he was like this professional poker player. And he comes uh -huh. and he's like, can I shuffle? I was like, yeah, sure. And he's like, <laughs> and I was like, what the heck? And my mom, like her mind was blown. And yeah. it was just, it was, a, it was a day, man. That's the day Don Cheadle took all my money. I'm kidding. <laughs> <We didn't. laughs> you know, Kate it was Hudson, actually really cool. Kate Hudson owes me $20. Oh, see, look at that. Yeah. Bam, 20 bucks. With, and Kate. with interest, it's probably at least like twenty-two fifty by now. At least, mm -hmm. yeah. man. Yeah, I was That's in hilarious. I was acting class with Kate Hudson and we did a scene and, and during the scene, I had, you know, I had to give her 20 bucks. And then right after we finished the scene, she bolted and she had to like go to, I don't know, some audition or something. And I was like, hey, Kate, you know, my, my 20. And she's like, yeah, I'll get you. I'll get you next time. Never saw her again. Never <laughs> saw her again. <laughs> so Kate Hudson, so if, Kate, you're listen, to this. if you're listening to this podcast, I know you're a huge fan of this podcast. Listen, <laughs> just hit me up with my 20. You don't need to pay interest. I know you got plenty of dinero. So I'm looking for <laughs> payback. Okay. Uh, it's time we, we start collecting all right that's yeah. what this boils down to right <laughs> you know at the at the time lauren holly was actually married to jim carrey yep oh dude, so, have you seen um, the, um have, have i ever shown you the autograph that jim sent me have i shown you mine no okay okay what does your I, say I what does your okay, say we we'll, left we'll out compare. Oh, oh, right, i'm yeah, sorry yeah. man it's we're talking about jim carrey so, now yeah so that's awesome we're at the, um, I think we're at Spago's for the after party when we won the Emmys one year for best, yes. best show. And yeah, that was, was there. Emmy number two. Emmy number two. Okay. So Jim is there with Lauren. Jim is a super nice, just total sweet guy. Amazing so, human being. Yeah, just fantastic. So we take a photo. He's like, oh, let's take a photo. So he brings over a photographer and Lauren, Jim, and I take a photo. You know, I don't really think anything of it. And then two weeks later in the mail, I received this photo and i take it out and it's the photo this photographer took of lauren you know jim and myself and it says dear justin you are obviously quite drunk in this photo your buddy jim <laughs> 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 and i was 15 i was not drinking at all <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious that's so funny right or what what i remember he, he was in his yellow suit i believe Okay. And he said to Adam, the greatest man I have ever known. 
<laughs> is what he put on mine. I remember doing magic for him, and then That's he had awesome. brought he had brought his daughter Jane yeah. onto the set, and I showed him a trick, and Jane was like, "I know one magic trick that I'm gonna show you." Uh-huh. And she took about 17 minutes to do this magic <laughs> trick, which I now know what the magic trick was, and his face was just like, "What in the heck is going on?" And he was like, "I'm so sorry." Right. Like right, right, the entire yeah. time, he was so fantastic. Yeah, like one of the awesome best dude. people totally. ever in life. I agree. Like that's I agree. that's one one entertainer I would I would really just love to just sit and have a cup of coffee with. He's you know, oh, it'd be fascinating, man. You know, just cool. you know, you grow up with him. You know, you guys clearly were were in a different little bit of a circle with him. But, you know, uh, the outside growing up and watching him on like in Living Color and all his characters mm. and, and it was just it, we still reference <laughs> Fire Marshal Bill and Fire Marshal Bill and, yeah. and you know, Lloyd Christmas oh, and, go in there. <laughs> and I mean, you uh, played it earlier, the Samsonite clip. Yeah, the Samsonite clip. See, I mean, Simmons, 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 Swanson, Swanson, Swanson. <laughs> Maybe it's on the briefcase. Look on the. Oh, yeah, it's right here. <laughs> Samsonite. I was way off. I knew it started with an S, though. It comes <laughs> up almost every night we play. There's always oh some some reference to Jim Carrey, and then he started doing uh, paintings and uh, just these massive pieces. I don't know if you've seen them, but they're amazing. Oh. The guy has got. He's got. He has got a little bit of talent, Jim. And yeah, uh, a little bit. A little. I he's he's a talentedish guy. To, yeah, I I taught him a lot. So. You know, That's he's, good. He's, he's still coming up. He's got a lot more work to do, but <laughs> during, the, during you know, the, your heavy drinking years as a 15 year old. Exactly. <laughs> I yeah. heard that. I heard that he really in like when, when he came down here from Canada, Canada, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, as sorry, a Leafs Mom. fan. Sorry. That when back when the Leafs weren't good, <laughs> um, they before they had what miles Austin, that was their like freaking star right. uh, before all of that he used to carry around a 20 million dollar check yep. in his wallet that was blank yep. and he used I, to say I, one I, day I i'm gonna cash it yeah in his first big movie they paid him 20 million dollars it's insane That's and he so lived in his car I mean, yeah, he yeah. Lived in his car. absolutely yeah i mean he had but i mean when you're that funny like yeah he was a genius doesn't matter funnier he is shit. a genius so he, funny. he's he's so talented in so many ways i, I really you know, aside just from his acting, like I was saying, his artwork, if you if you ever just get to look at it and really yeah. just see what he's been doing and how he paints, uh, it's it's amazing. I miss that physical comedy, too. Like, I mean, Jim was a, is a genius physical comedian. And, mm. you know, that era kind of was more physical comedy. We don't really see that now. Um, no, I love it was a very comedy. Danny Kaye throwback, isn't it? Yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. It's so he, uh, funny. What's, what's great about his physical comedy is it's never – even though he's doing something that's ridiculous and over the top, it always seems very grounded and right for the character. It yep. never seems cartoony yeah. or too much or weird. He somehow makes something that is complete farce um, <laughs> work in a real world, like uh, in, in, in a real reality. Like it, right. it, it's, it's just insane. Yeah, it's remarkable. It is remarkable. So, Jim, Crazy I times. know you're a big fan of this podcast, too. Um, you Kate, owe me 20 bucks? <laughs> Kate owes me. Kate Hudson owes me 20. And uh, you owe me 25. Just just randomly. You don't really, but you got a lot of money. So, why don't just pony up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my we'll just, God. We'll just start requesting money through Venmo. <laughs> Jim, why did Jim Carrey pay me $25? <laughs> oh, right, for that hangover cure for when I was drunk at 15. That there was, we go. Got it. Got it. So got hilarious. It. And like in a month, you're like, you never guess what happened. But right. I received $25. <laughs> yeah, how funny would that be? Randomly. Jim Carrey. Please send this to Jim Carrey. I want to hear that story so hey, badly. Buddy, <laughs> go buy yourself a bottle of gin. Here's your 25 Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Yeah. It's oh, great. God. So you guys worked on picket fences together. What what else? I mean, clearly a lot of voiceover work. Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold. And uh, hey Arnold was great, man. It was funny. Yeah. I loved it. I loved doing that show. Tell me that about your hilarious. experience with Harold. 
Oh, thanks, man. You Tell me about your experience as Harold. you super funny as Curly. Yeah, we did thanks, Hey Arnold man. for years. I mean, we've done, you know, probably hundreds of voiceovers. Oh, yeah, for sure. Years. Absolutely. Yeah. What what was what was it like as as Harold? What was your audition process like for that? Do you remember at all? Yeah, I remember. I got called in and met with Craig, who was the creator of the show. <laughs> Craig and they Bartlett. Me, yeah. Yep, Craig Bartlett, who's fantastic, and they gave me just uh, as they do for an animation audition, like you know the the one pager with the with the sketch of the character of Harold, what he looked like, and then you know a few paragraphs worth of dialogue. So I just looked looked at him. He looked like you know kind of an overweight bully with the, with the hat. And I thought, all right, you know, let me just channel some of the bullies in my, <laughs> in my school. And, uh, but, but also give them kind of a soft heart and, uh, just laid it down, kind of came up with the voice and Craig and I just bounced some ideas back and forth. And I don't remember, I, I remember it was a long audition. I think it was like 20 or 30 minutes. Oh, I, wow. Yeah. It was, that, I that's, just, that's considered long. Oh, absolutely. Well, Normally yeah, in there for six minutes, audition, seven minutes. Sure. Yeah. Oh, oh it's I mean, I'm in there for less than 10 minutes, man. And they're, they're, they're trying to get them through or, or. Yeah, well, no, mean, it's, it's, it's two pages. It's two pages right. and six, seven lines. Um, and it's just like, that was, let's just see what you do, right? You do your thing and then right. they go, mm-hmm. they, you, you, it, it looks like they hate your guts. And then they go, exactly. that was great. Yeah. Now, can you try it? Um, can you make him about three months older and then <laughs> can you make him just a little bit like a, a little bit like he's just kind of scared of everything but doesn't want to show it right okay mm. okay yeah great and yeah, i think great. exactly and i think you're totally right and i think you know especially for that role any kind of job typically where there's a series regular they want to throw some direction at you just to see whether you take direction what kind of choices you make so i think that's why it was long and i don't remember if i went back again but i remember we did the pilot and then there was an Arnold for the pilot who did not show up on the first episode. Really? We, wow. when we did it. I don't know why. I don't I, remember that. Yeah. Well, I guess I wasn't uh, I wasn't around for the pilot. That's probably you why. Or did you do the pilot? No. No, okay, well, I joined in like episode three. Oh, okay. What so, yeah. I mean, we did the pilot and we ended up doing the show a while later. I mean, it was like nine months later. And there, I mean, there were five Arnolds throughout the entire series. There was a lot of Arnolds. I must have been a little bit later because I my first episode was after Torin's voice had changed because my audition was actually to replace Torin as Arnold and then they <laughs> created Curly. So I must have been maybe even been season two then. So you were saying that they they created Curly based on you. I, I yeah, I had done I an evil laugh. There, there's right. this there's a um there's a part in, in in the pilot where Arnold climbs the Empire State Building and he's like trying to fend off planes with a baseball bat he's like yeah i'm gonna swing it i'm gonna swing it all day and then he like does this laugh and i did this like <laughs> like this maniacal <laughs> laugh yeah. and they were like that's a new character I have no idea. <laughs> he's gonna hold the principal hostage with dodgeballs yeah and there right. you are and that's that's what i did oh that's yeah. really cool that is very cool. That I mean, does something cool. like that happen all the time? Or is that just kind of no. like, they're like, oh. It's a rarity, man. I mean, it takes That's a creative brain. Happens. And Craig is one of the most creative people, I think, living on this planet. Uh, he's created so many uh, hits for um, children's yep. uh, cartoon shows that it's insane that are just all classics. And uh, I think that's just his brain, to be honest with you. I've never had that happen since where somebody heard my voice and went, I've got an idea by George. I'm making a new character. No, I've never, never heard again. that before. Never. No. In all my years of, I've never heard of like somebody going in and be like, wait, we're going to create a whole character around you. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I, I'm so stoked. Um, yeah. I, I, I have a friend now who was like, I just found out you were Curly and Hey Arnold. And I was like, yeah, I was. He's like, <laughs> you do not understand. You do <laughs> not understand that my Wi-Fi name was Thaddeus Gamblethorpe and wow. my password was curly something something I was like <laughs> what hilarious. in the world <laughs> that's that's, that's awesome. gotta that's gotta be a, a well like I've never been in 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 your guys' situation where you know like I would have well okay I've had fangirls that uh, they say awful things to you to get what they want but um but it's because it, you're a big time basketball player oh huge <laughs> No, um, no, but it, how, how do you guys 
deal with like fans and and i'm not saying like they're climbing all over you but it's like you know do you, do you take it with a grain of salt like your like your fans and and your followers or oh i remember there was it, one there was, was one, one experience like humbling where, yeah one experience where i was uh in high school and we went to washington dc for like a school trip and i was watching it was when beverly hills 902 when melrose place were really popular like yeah. in the mid, mid 90s freaking love those shows right so i'm sitting down with my friends in this my wife hotel. and i were just talking about that today actually yeah. <laughs> sitting, sitting down in the hotel lobby to watch i think it was an episode of melrose place and it was like a few minutes in and suddenly we hear the screaming. We're like, what the hell? <laughs> and we look over and there's like all these girls like screaming, oh my God, blah, 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 blah. And I'd see they're like, they recognize me. And I'm thinking, I don't know, this is very odd. And they start chasing me. <laughs> and I had to get up and run all throughout the hotel and lock myself in my hotel room to avoid them. And I missed the entire episode of Melrose Place, which was a total bummer. <laughs> <laughs> number one but number two i'm thinking to myself going back like why did i run from them like they were quite yeah, right girls what was Dude, wrong with me that let, i was like running away that was pretty dumb <laughs> let, the act, let it happen let the axe yeah. commercial be exactly you know? i mean see no how it plays doubt. out I, i'm like see what how was it... i what was i thinking um but that Dude. was my only like crazy kind of <laughs> situation other than that you know fans are super sweet usually they're they're very complimentary and then it's great. I mean, that's like one of the, I, uh, at least, I mean, I'm not, you know, a big actor where you can't go into a restaurant or, you know, you're totally neurotic. It's just once in a while fans compliment you or, or just say nice things. And it, yeah, it's great. I mean, who doesn't want to hear nice things told about themselves, right? Yeah, yeah it's I've, the same I've, for me, except on social media. Now I have a TikTok presence. Yeah. And here's the, here's the thing is that people either recognize me right away and they're like, oh, you know, they, they question, they say, were you ever an actor or weren't you a child actor? Which is always the biggest insult because that means implies you're not acting now. And right, I you know, exactly. clearly am. Um, but they don't know it's an insult. So I get yeah, it. Right. But uh, then there's the other, other way around it, which I have red hair. I have this face that can look like a lot of other faces. So it's like, oh, look, hi, Ed Sheeran. Oh, look, hi, Vladimir Putin. Oh, look, oh, hi, wow. dude from, from Call of Duty. Uh, like, I mean, I get those things all you, You've got one that really are you gets Dylan? under your skin. No. <laughs> oh, I got one that you, really... What do you do when you If you, you get ever like... call me Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle, I will yeah. I will just lose my I'm ass. so annoyed. I changed my, my <sighs> Xbox gamer profile to Dewey. <laughs> so pissed. Uh, I was like, so what pissed. is that? And that was some do, weird creepy yeah, doll. What do you do when you get... Because I, I notice sometimes on Twitter, like, you know, I'll see these trolls or... You, you know, went here, step by step? some nonsense from them what do you do because you're big on twick tiktok now when you get trolls or some hate nasty messages and stuff do you just ignore it or do you respond to them justin you're, and you're, i have I've, a big I've, have you, a big it's sometimes tactful. i will say that you're, you're, <laughs> you're tactful and yeah. the, I am. the way that I, you approach the trolls is that you are you're you're firm but you're nice about it yeah. Yeah, I'm firmly nice uh to to some some I just completely ignore and some I yeah. love to mess with. It depends on how mean they are is how mean yeah. back I will be. Uh -huh. Like if they like for instance if if I'm doing a magic trick and they're just completely being a um, some douchebaggery about it yeah i will then be like guys this is my my crazy uncle dan he just got out of the mental institution <laughs> he's been doing this my entire life i am so sorry right i will turn it like right back around good on them or or, or do something um like that most of the time though i'm saying something that's like tactfully nice like mm -hmm, and you can't do it um it's very yeah, funny right. <laughs> because I just I just had my first in person magic gig a couple of nights ago uh -huh. uh, that that I've had the in in a very long time because of like quarantine COVID and all these things yeah. and like I've made a lot of TikTok videos where I've done some like really intense like magic things and it's always the ones that are like really ridiculous and dumb and easy that get views and I, everybody loves to try to call you out right whether they're right or wrong what have you. 
um, they're like, that's stupid. I could do it. Yeah. I did these same tricks, which by the way, took me years and years and years and years and years of flight, sleight of hand to perfect. Did the same exact effects in person. Mines were on floors. Yeah. Because it's so different watching intricate yeah. sleight of hand that really needs in-person distractions yep. or in-person misdirections or what have you. Um, I rely on my surroundings a lot and I just don't have the surroundings when you're just you know, yeah. looking in a, in a certain direction because I'm not a stage magician um, in, in, in there. And it's just like, you know, I'm, I know that I'm, that I, that I can do what I do. And it's, it, it, people don't take into consideration that you're watching a video on a loop, man. You're yeah. watching it on a loop. You have this capability of angles and being able to just slow down the video if you right. want. You know, I've, I've learned plenty of tricks watching someone do magic on video where I've just been like, I'm going to slow it down and see what ha happened. Yep. But, you know, it's hard to deal with trolls. The best thing to do is ignore them. And sometimes I fall in the trap where I'm Kevin Durant and I have to respond to everybody. Yeah, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it, it's, it's gold because you'll just come back on. And you're like, you got to go check this out. Well, <laughs> it's great. so fun. I think I think one guy, so funny. one guy. Oh, I was so mean to this one kid. <laughs> but like he kind of deserved it. He was really mean. Like he yeah. said something that was just like, it was so bad. Well, he was. And he decided he, he was, and he decided to have a glamour shot as his picture. And he was a little overweight, and he had on a tank, a white tank top, with a mustache, and he looked like Wish.com Freddie Mercury. Oh god! And I let him. I remember know. him now. Yeah. <laughs> it was so priceless. I was just like, okay, don't forget the words to somebody to love. Wish.com Freddie Mercury. <laughs> like. <laughs> Shut him was, down. Game on. Just ridiculous. That's great. Bismillah, kid. Bismillah. That's great. That is great. Oh my God. You guys have so many, so many good stories. Um, and it's I, I'm finding it harder, you know, that and this is just a, a sidebar, whatever you want to call it. But um, just the the older that you get, like it's it's hard to find friends, like genuine friends that you've had for this long. So I I think it's really cool you guys came on and Adam, you were willing to co-host and kind of help me through this because I dude, I got so many good stories this time. Like that, dude, that's, that's kind of like the whole point of this. Um, because this this whole thing started mainly because of Adam. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking and, and he, you were always sharing some story. Um, you're like, yeah, you know, I like to go steal all the gummy bears and almonds because you, <laughs> you bust into your bag and you start got some in my backpack them. right now. Great, yeah, great. exactly. And I'm like, you know, that's, that's like the interesting things I, I like to hear. So always try to get a, get a little bit of that. And you, oh God, I got so much today. That's so awesome. Um, Fantastic. Super fun. um as far as like people, because they, they, they always ask Adam, you know, like what, you know, what, what do I need to do to get into voice acting or, um, cause I think a lot of people think you're just going to record something on Adobe audition, turn it in. And that's that. It is um, right. What, what is, what's like your, uh, <laughs> your, your advice for, for anybody that wants to try to start honing a craft. Cause they don't understand it's, it's years of work decades. Yeah. In your well, case. I always tell people, first thing is, if you haven't done it, get in an improv class, get in an acting class, um, start to learn how to initially become an actor because- Still called voice acting. That's right. Voiceover acting. So, you know, you have to be able to be a good actor to be a good voiceover performer. Um, so, so do that, get in classes, take, get some training, get your feet wet in improv and, and acting and understand technique and the craft and then after you feel you know comfortable with that then um you know you have to put together a one minute reel like a compilation of a bunch of different voices and there's all sorts of like then you can start taking some voiceover classes there's you google you know voiceover classes in whatever city you're in new york chicago la toronto mm -hmm. uh, probably in florida i'm sure there's a bunch um then you atlanta know, Atlanta. Yeah. Take some voiceover classes, learn the craft and then, you know, kind of move up the ladder, get a, do a, a one minute reel and then try and get an agent and then try and audition. And, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a craft. You just, you keep getting better and you keep training. 
but also yeah. know what genre you're wanting to get into because it's different when you're doing animation such as yeah. cartoons and such uh as opposed to promos for promos for different networks like uh you know the next on melrose place <laughs> right you know, all of those things actually it would have been next on melrose place it's exactly but you it. get it yeah. or it would have been yeah. like <laughs> on the next modern family <laughs> yeah. or or you know commercial um uh, commercials are, are completely different Bada ba ba ba. i'm loving it you know yeah. it's just it's a it's a very different thing so make sure you're taking the correct classes for the auditions that you want to get and and the and the jobs you want to eventually try to get yep well the, i think the biggest thing that you've always shared with your audience adam is that um you're always like, look, you need to be available. You need to be typically, you know, like if you're trying to get into acting, you need to be where there's acting. Uh, you need to be available. You take classes. You know, there's, you know, I th think that because the internet's so available, everybody's like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. And they don't understand the work and the prep and uh, and and the the blood, sweat, and tears you guys put into your your craft that makes you so good. Um, Thirty uh, years in, and we're still learning. That's right. That, that's that's a good thing, though. You that's know, right. it's like I, my my goal with this is to to learn more of your guys' side of the business because I'm on the outside looking in, mm -hmm. and Just like uh, Evan and Hansen. I've <laughs> I've learned so much from uh, just sitting and talking or or watching guys do a read through on something or. Um, Speaking of which, uh, I'm going to read your script tonight, Adam. You're up. Oh, sweet man! I I really appreciate that. Thoughts. Adam wrote Thanks, a fantastic man. script, which you know, Justin, very cool. So thank you. You'll, you'll, you'll really like the revision. Yeah. Excited to uh, get out there and shoot it. Shoot this baby. Hey, no. once I get your guys' approval, we'll, we'll do another, um, we'll do another reading and maybe we'll cool. do a little podcast about it to, yeah. uh, to maybe promote it or promote it or, or, or what have you and, and shoot it or shoot a, you know, a trailer for it for sure. Absolutely. A absolutely. Well, you know, I'm, I'm here for anything. I'm all, I'm always down. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> um, well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Justin Shinkaro. Uh, if if you don't know his face, you definitely know his voice. It's, it's a lot like Adam. Um, you you guys are well known, whether whether the the audience knows it or not. Um, hey, Arno, come here, I'll pound you. <laughs> that sounded exactly like Harold. I, I don't even know that that was that was identical. That, that totally reminds me of, of yeah, just Harold. That's exactly what it sounds like. Um, it, it's always awesome to have uh, a talented individuals that are willing to to share uh, your information and knowledge because it's priceless. Uh, so I thank you for being on, Adam. Uh, excellent co-host. You you really really helped me out with this one, you little turd. Um, and <laughs> Justin, it's, I've thanks for couple, having me, I've man. I've got a couple pointers for him. I'll talk to him offline. So you know, maybe next time it'll be a little better. I, Oof, I want to thank I you. I appreciate it. <laughs> on you, you sending people Venmo uh, requests. Yeah, Venmo. Uh, Kate Hudson, please. Uh, you owe me twenty dollars. Twenty. And yeah. uh, Jim Carrey, uh, twenty five. Just just because. And um, anybody just Jim Carrey tax. Of, yeah, just yeah. Jim Carrey tax. Yeah, that's just a new Jim thing. Jim Carrey tax, exactly. <laughs> all right well Thanks thank for having you everybody. me on man this was fun absolutely you're, you're welcome on anytime it's been a blast uh and i i know everybody learned something so thank you for the stories thank you for sharing anytime. and thank you all for tuning in i appreciate Woo! it till next time bye-bye next time <laughs>